In episode 5, it appeared for a time that Rhaenyra Targaryen's wedding festivities with Lenor Valerian may go without incident, with the only major drama coming from the appearance of her stepmother expost friend in an inappropriately dressed gown. The Westerosi wedding is incomplete, dramatic entrances and all, unless someone dies. Sir Joffrey Lonmouth, Lenor's lover, is unfortunately the victim for Rhaenyra and Lenor's wedding. While the reason Sir Kristen Cole really beat Joffrey to death is unknown, it is clear that it is connected to Rhaenyra and Kristen's love. Like any good House of the Dragon episode, there is usually more going on in a scene than meets the eye. Daemon Targaryen's reappearance was among the pomp and circumstance of the entrances, which also featured an outstanding entry for House Valerian. Wasn't he exiled, you might wonder? Exile is more of a suggestion to Daemon than anything else. He probably hasn't been around for the past five years, but shortly after the Valerians arrive, he enters the scene, intimidating the partygoers and especially infuriating Gerald Royce, the cousin of Daemon's late wife Rhea Royce. At the start of the episode, we saw that Daemon obeyed his brother's request and went back to the Vale to visit his wife. But when they run into Ray while she was out hunting by herself, they engage in a heated discussion. Ray is shown realizing that her life might be in danger as we learn that Damon and Ray have reportedly never married. She is knocked from her horse, and as Damon leaves her, she strikes him with one final remark while she is lying on the ground. The image cuts away as Damon picks up a rock and moves back toward her. So was Ray murdered by Damon? Saying that he did would be the straightforward response. Even if the scene strongly suggests it, there is a sense of ambiguity if you weren't present when the crime was committed. All we know about Lady Ray and George R.R. R. Martin's novel Fire and Blood is that she fell off her horse and hit her head on a stone. However, she survives for nine days in the book before dying. Although it's never clearly mentioned the demon killed her. Even if the facts may never be known for certain, Lord Royce undoubtedly holds Damon responsible for Ray's death, and Damon is hardly the distraught widow, coldly demanding his inheritance. We observe as Damon draws the attention of both Rhaenyra and Lena Valerian as the festivities continue. Damon dances with Lena, while Rhaenyra concentrates on her wedding festivities, dancing with Lena and Harwin. He admits to her that he wasn't upset by Ray's death, but Lena doesn't seem to be troubled by this. She chooses to flirt with the prince instead in an effort to learn more about him. What is happening to Lena and Damon, then? Well, if you've read Fire and Blood, you already know that this episode both references and predicts events from upcoming episodes. In the end, Rhaenyra will have an affair with Sir Harwin, leaving Damon newly single and ready to wed Lena. Damon has his eyes set on Rhaenyra as well, though. When Otto Hightower learned from a source that the two had been seen coupling in a brothel late at night, it threw everything into disarray. While the two came close, they never completed the deed, as far as we know. Rhaenyra's inability to be shocked by Damon shocked her, and he abandoned her to become intoxicated and fall asleep. Tensions increase when the niece and uncle are reunited on the dance floor. This time, Rhaenyra puts Damon to the test by requesting that he elope with her while she is still single and get married to her at Dragonstone. This Ares and Alicent, Emily Carey, both see their interaction, which is more significant because it is obvious to everyone else. While we are unsure of what what occurs while the partygoers dance, they did appear to be very near. Everything becomes chaotic as the conflict ends. Rhaenyra and Lena are surrounded by partygoers as Sir Criston violently murders Joffrey in a fit of fury and guilt. When the dust settles, Joffrey's lifeless body is all that is left on the ground, while Viserys stares while suffering from nose bleeding. What happened to Damon then? We don't really know. And they Rin lies a bit of a problem. We know that Damon would eventually marry Rhaenyra, and that he is perhaps the most impulsive person in Westeros. He might have agreed to his niece's proposal, is that possible? He prepared their dragons, didn't he? Or did he maybe flee with Lena?